Hello everyone, welcome to Zarev Game Dev. In this video, I'm going to create the Air Hockey game in Unity. So, if you want to follow along with me, you can download the assets from the GitHub link below. So, let's start creating the game. So, as you can see, I have basics in setup. Uh, I've just created a new scene, renamed it as gameplay, and changed the camera size. And we have nothing else for now. Now and I have uh, imported the sprites. So these two sprites are 128 pixels per unit, and this three are 556. So you can remember the settings. Or the pro I'll also link to the project down below, so you can see how the finished game looks like. So let's first start by adding the background. So the first one is the background with uh, logo so let's add it and we'll need to bump up the camera size so it should be around 12.5 and now let's add the background with border so we don't need anything for this uh, background with logo so let's push it up behind and let's uh, just rename it to bg and similarly this bg border let's rename it to frame because we are going to add collider to it and let's position it four so uh, as you can see the basic play area is set up now to have this play area collide with uh, the boundaries we'll add a polygon collider to it to it and we'll add a cup edit this uh, couple of collisions because these collisions are it will just pass through sometimes at high speeds so i'll just add it add it this so we'll do it afterwards so that's for the frame now uh, after having this frame let's set up the our players so here's going to be at five which is the orange and we'll have the pink at negative five so both are going to be similar and after adding both the players let's add the pack and size it a little so it looks good enough now the game should look like this uh, after having this let's uh, set up everything one by one so we'll need a couple of scripts and before that let's add the game manager and we'll add the game manager script So that's how our basic scene's going to look like. Now, the puck's going to need a couple of things. So the first thing it will need is a circle collider 2D, and it will need a material. So let's create a 2D physics material, and let's first create the bouncy material. So the bouncy material is just going to have its property set bounciness set to 0 0.5 so it collides with it so we'll set the bouncy material to the frame 
and we'll set the bouncy material to the circle collider afterwards let's add a rigid body 2d and it's going to be dynamic and we'll also add the bouncy material to it and we don't need it to have controlled by gravity so that's how the puck's going to look for and there is not any movement because we are not moving there so let's start editing the players so for the player orange similarly let's add a circle collider 2d and let's duplicate this bouncy and we'll rename it to normal and for this we'll set the bounciness to 0 0.2 and we'll set the player orange material to the normal material and it's not going to have any triggers now let's add rigid body to it and it's going to be kinematic and afterwards let's uh, create a script to move that player so we'll create a player script and want to control it bounce so we'll create a bounce script so let's add a ch script one's going to be for the player and the next one is going to be for the bounce so for the orange it's uh bounds are going to be around here so which is the 6.5 and 3.2 and similarly a negative 3.2 and it will move around uh, to the point one around here so let's have it for here for now so let's add the script so the first script we are going to add is the player script and afterwards we'll add the bound script and similarly let's add all the components player pink so we have added a circle collider 2d and its material is going to be normal and then we added a rigid body 2d and it was kinematic and similarly its material was normal And afterwards, we added two script to it. So the first script is the player script, and the next script is the bounce script. So we have set it to kinematic because we don't want it to be affected by forces, and we have a physics material to it because whenever uh, the puck collides with uh, our player, so it should have some. Uh, bounciness and collision so similarly for the puck scripts we'll need to create a puck script and let's attach it to the and let's create our uh, two goals so which are the player goal and it's going let's reset its transfer and let's position it at 85 and afterwards we'll add a box collider 2d which is going to like here and we'll have two tags one for the player and the next one's for the ai goal and let's have a tag of the player goal to the player goal and we'll duplicate this player goal and we'll set the y position negative and we need to set it to trigger and for this we'll set it to ai goal so these are two triggers we'll use it in the scripts afterwards and as you can see now our scene is almost set up now let's set up the ui so for the ui let's create a text first so let's import the text message pro essentials and afterwards let's create the player score so the player scores for the orange one 
and let's go inside the game so we can see how it's looking and let's set its color to blue or let's set its color to orange let's position it to the center center now and let's have it 250 by 2 let's make it bold and if we position it negative 700 so we can see it as a score let's just have it blue and this one's for the player score and let's call the upper one the ai score and we'll set its color to red instead of negative 850 we'll position red positive 850 and before we start the game we'll need a button so it's going to be start button and let's set up its width to be 1200 by 150 and let's position it at the same colors going to be the color of this frame and let's set up its text so it's going to just say click to start let's make it uh, six let's make it white so it will just say click to start and it's already positioned towards the center so this is the start button and similarly we'll need one for the end button but and we'll have multiple buttons so let's create a panel for it. and it's in the center and afterwards we'll create two buttons so this one's going to be the restart button and let's hide the start button for now and restart its position towards the center let's not have it transition and let's make it color this uh, orange one looks a little bit let's change its size to it and we'll change the text to just uh, restart and let's duplicate this restart we'll call it quit and we'll position that the y to negative 2 and this one's just going to say quit instead of having it all capital this one will look better and we'll need one more text so let's uh, create a ui let's create text let's increase its font size to end let's set its color to dark orange i will need type and let's make it bold and let's change its alignment and we'll position it at 200 and it's just going to say orange wins or whoever wins so instead of oh let's have it 96 so it's just going to send the message whoever is going to win instead of text tmp we'll just call it as win and both should be hidden for now but depending on the condition we'll show the start and the end panel and after having all our ui score and the player scene set up we'll need to create all the scripts so for the scripts the first thing we'll need is uh, to have our player move and the player should move in a specific area and similarly for the bounds it will check for the upper bound or the left or the right bound it will reset that bound and we'll need to have it for yep only the player the puck have all the colliders but the puck will need to update the score whenever it uh, triggers on any of the goals and 
we'll set up the start and the end conditions in the game manager so let's start editing our script so the first thing we are going to edit is the player so we should be able to quickly check it if it's working and for the player let's first uh, set up the movement So it's going to have a serialized field float up down left and right so this one's going to check if whatever we are clicking is in a range so let's have a public bool can move and inside the start we are just going to can move and we'll set it up in the game manager but for now let's just set an off and inside the update if we cannot move and if we can move then we'll do input dot get mouse button get the mouse button and we'll get the mouse position and after having the mouse position let's first uh, check at component and let's check if we are colliding with the player so if we are not colliding with the player uh, we are not going for the player dot overlap point yeah not colliding with anything then we'll just return else we'll uh, get component and we'll do exit body 2d for rigid body 2d we'll do move position and we'll move towards the mouse so it's just going to with this simple trick and it should be able to move and maybe we won't need this up down and left right and let's attach this script uh let's add the bound scripts but it's also going to be pretty much and let's go inside the bounds here we'll have the serialized field for the float up down left and right afterwards we'll have the update and inside the update let's first get the position and we'll check if m dot x is greater than right then we'll do temp dot x is going to be right and similarly we'll check for the left and afterwards we'll check for the up and afterwards we'll set the transform dot position to be the temp so any of this is uh, above the bounds it will just reset its position. so we have our player and the bounds set up 
and there is nothing away. But uh, inside the awake, that's first uh, we'll need to start the can move. And we'll need to add the bounds. So let's go inside Unity. And we have already attached the player script. We have also attached the bound. So for the player orange, bounds are going to for the up. It's let's see. Going to be at 6.5 and down it's going to be at one and similarly for the right and the right uh, left and the right it's going to be at 3.2 and negative 3.2 and positive now let's set up the player pink for the player pink the left and the right as we already calculated the three point positive Similarly, for the down, it's going to be at negative 6.5. And for the up, let's set it up as a 1. So it should not be able to move beyond that. And now let's see if our players are moved. There's problem. Uh, there may be some problem with the bound script. Is greater than right, less than F. Down, greater than up. So now it should work. I just had a little bit of problem with the bound script. Now we are able to. As you can see, it's out of the range, it does not work. Have it hide and a little bit shaky. It's almost working correctly. Early or purple, they are all that sound here is going. And it's not almost perfect, but we do not do the overlap point. Maybe we need check it in the area, but for now, the overlap point should work fine. So we have our movements, but now we need to update the score. So whenever the puck is going to be inside this trigger, it should update this. We need to set up also the. So the first thing we are going to do is setting up the game man. I've already done it before, and it's easy. And similarly, let's set up the puck. For the puck, we are just going to do the on trigger enter 2D. Let's do on trigger enter 2D. We'll just do if collision dot game collision dot compare tag. Let's first compare tag for the player goal. So if we are colliding with player, then we are going to this trans dot position zero plus and let's add up into two F and similarly if we are going to collide the AI AI goal instead of adding will subtract so the new puck is always that okay exactly in the middle but uh, it will be open 
area and we'll need to set up its velocity according to t it is after we have set up the velocity we should be able to see the pump so let's go add unit and maybe there should not be problems they are already attached so let's yep it's resetting and it is and whenever this resets we need to create the and game should so the and need to have a start panel and some conditions so let's set it up it's going to be a bit basic and there's not any update functions uh, they are just a function for the button so inside the player let's remove this can move because we are going to set it up game man and let's just delete everything for now first thing we are going to need is the game man and we'll set it up in the awake so if since is also and this is for the game on afterwards afterwards let's set up all the parameters game objects and what so the first thing let's have stabilize speed for the game objects first we'll button and panel anything else hmm uh, both the players so let's just call it player orange and player pink so we'll have a references directly to start and similar to a serialized field for using all the text to be tm pro text the first one's going to be for the player's core text AI score text and the last ones for the wind are the three text. Let's have an integer for the player score the AI score. And have our instant setup. Let's set it all this up in the awake and we need to set up the Can move to false. Their score is going to be zero. Yes. Yes. Clearly. Perfect. It's uh, going to. Scores nine as so as the player score dot for the AI. After setting up the text, uh, we need the uh, start button active uh, early and panel dot set active. We need to do the player orange dot get from here. Like that 
Clear canvas to this side. Again, here to do for the player pink can move. Afterwards, let's set up the start button. So, this is the click void. Let's do the start game. Set the start game. The start button dot set active call. And we'll set this both the can move. To here, uh, and we should be able to move the objects. And now let's set everything up. Unity. So, at the game manager, the first is the start button. Our panel. Here's. Here orange. Airplane and all the three text air score AI score uh, and panel have the way. and let's see wherever player score and the player goals are. Player score is down here. And similarly, player goes here. What is the AI score is above the AI goal? Okay. So the goals and everything is correct. Now we just need to have the functions for the restart, the quit, both are easy. Reload the scene. When we end the game, there should also be. That what so let's uh, see if the our start button should be working so there are not errors from I have not added the function add the game man all the stuff click start the games work Let's update the score. After update, we'll check the cut for the end game. So let's go inside Visual Studio, and everything is going to be inside the uh, game manager. So first thing we need is the update score, which called when the cup collides with the player or an AI. Just uh, going to have just one boolean parameter, so we are going to call it public void aid. We are going to it as the and we'll have a boolean is first thing we are going to as we'll do the rest. If it is player, then we'll update the player score. And then hit the player score. After having it, if player score, then we'll just create a function. So let's create it. So it's going to be public void game finished. Here, similarly. Ask a parameter of OSP and call game finished for this game. And let's copy this and similarly, thing as the at the AI uh, score instead of AI. And if AI score is equals to 50, 
and for this set the game finish first thing we are going to do is set up the message so uh, win text or text is the uh, first thing we are going to give players player is pink so it's going to be pink if it is not player then it's orange afterwards we'll add it so it's just going to be that easy then we'll do an panel or active so and we need to stop scales dot time scales going to zero and we'll set the can move pause so let's just call that should wait for the game finish afterwards let's add the two it is for the game quit uh, are the two buttons so it will do application dot quit and if we are inside the editor editor dot apple dot is false similarly for the required part with this to unity engine dot dot manager dot local here we'll just load so we have the game quit the game finished update score now so we need to call the update score so if our puck collides with the player, the player goal, we just do game man dot instance dot update score, and here we'll just pass true because it's here. Similarly, at the AI goal, and that should be it for the scripting, and the game should be finished. We should be able to do all the conditional checkings so for the restart let's add the game manager and for the restart we'll add the game restart function and for the quit we'll add the game quit and let's start playing so if we can see if the game finished we are able to uh, the AI score is increasing because this is for the AI and let's just finish it quickly so we can see how it works let's see if the score is getting increased for the that's the player score it's also getting increased and there are not many problems now and if we hit 15 our uh, end screen should pop up so this is the end screen is going to look and we didn't set up the win we'll just orange wins because it's the orange one which is the ai and if we do restart restart the game and let's now check it against once more so let's uh, have pink to win and that's why i needed to add it uh, he added those colliders let's added this collider so it does not let's not do anything now let's see if uh, we can see the pink player working 
So let's just have orange all game. And afterwards, both scores are increasing, but uh, we'll need to win for the pink. And as you can see, uh, all we set up the physics parameters correctly with the weight, the friction, and it should as it should be points. and let's see if quit is working so quit is also working so that was it for this video and if you want to suggest any more games which should i which i should do you can comment below and if you watch the whole video thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video and if you do like the channel so like and subscribe thank you for watching